this video is a small crash course for absolute beginners. Notice that the first few minutes of this video are extremely important as we introduce what is GPT-4, how to access it and most importantly how to use it. If you are serious into this new AI thing, do take notes cause I'll be breaking down each of these topics you can find on OpenAI official GPT-4 website into simpler terms and bullet points so that you don't have to go through the lengthy process. Let's start. What is GPT-4? GPT as in Generative Pre-trained Transformer is a large multi-model model created by OpenAI and the fourth in its GPT series released on March 14, 2023. Being a multi-model model means it can now accept images as input as well as text prompts. While its previous version ChatGPT was able to read text prompts only. If you don't know what ChatGPT is, head over to the link in description where I explain all about it. So how to access GPT-4? First of all, you need to sign in to OpenAI which you can do by your Gmail or Microsoft account. This will let you access to ChatGPT. Now only ChatGPT Plus subscribers are given access to GPT-4 which costs around $20 per month. Fair enough, or you can join their waitlist. However, GPT-4 can be experienced for free on Microsoft Bing Chat as it's using GPT-4 from past few weeks. How to use GPT-4? What happens is you basically enter a text prompt and it provides solution to almost any of your questions without you bumping into different websites on Google, which was mainly what ChatGPT was used for. Here's the interesting part. GPT-4 can now read images which means if you upload an image to it and ask what is happening in the picture or what will happen if this happens in the picture, it can literally reply to you as humanly as possible. Take a look at this example, when it was asked what is unusual about this image, it was able to identify the inhuman action of the person which is ironing on the back of a car. See this is literally crazy, as the AI is building up a human personality of its own knowing what is right, what is wrong and how a normal human behaves in real life. Moving on to the OpenAI GPT-4 page, we can see some important topics as capabilities, limitations, risks and mitigations. Starting on with capabilities, in general, GPT-4 is capable of answering questions and reading images more humanly than ever, but breaking down these reports into simpler terms, we can say that GPT-4 is more reliable, creative and handles NAS instructions better than GPT-3.5. It was tested on a variety of benchmarks including exams designed for humans and traditional machine learning models. GPT-4 was tested in 24 out of 26 languages and outperformed GPT-3.5 and other large language models and most state-of-the-art models even for low resource languages like Latvian, Welsh and Swahili. GPT-4 is used internally for support, sales, content moderation and programming. To know which type of benchmarks it had cleared and how accurately GPT-4 has performed, feel free to check out these different tables on the OpenAI website. Limitations GPT-4 has similar limitations as earlier GPT models. Care must be taken when using these language models outputs especially in high stakes context. GPT-4 generally lacks knowledge of events that have occurred after September 2021. It significantly reduces hallucinations compared to previous models as it resists selecting common sayings but can miss several details. GPT-4 can be confidently wrong in its predictions as it can make simple reasoning errors and introduce security vulnerabilities. It can be overly gullible in accepting false statements from a user and it can fail at hard problems the same way we humans do. Moving on to risks and mitigations, GPT-4 poses similar risks as previous models such as generating harmful advice, buggy code or inaccurate information. While mitigations as in steps taken to reduce the risks by the company, they have engaged over 50 experts from domains such as AI alignment risks, cyber security, bio risk, trust and safety and international security to adversarially test the model. Collected additional data to improve GPT-4's ability to refuse requests on how to synthesize dangerous chemicals. Incorporated an additional safety reward signal during RLHF training to reduce harmful outputs. Decreased the model's tendency to respond to requests for disallowed content by 82% compared to GPT-3.5. Model level interventions increase the difficulty of eliciting bad behavior, but doing so is still possible. Before we get to the summary, there are other topics like stability, training process, predictable scaling and API. Let me know in the comments if you want me to explain these in next video. So let's see how much we had covered in this crash course, starting from introduction to GPT-4, how to access it and how to use it, its capabilities, limitations, risks and mitigations. 
So far, these are the most easy and important to know. If you have any questions, please get in touch. Also, do let me know in the comments if you had learned anything new and hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Peace.